Hey, happy Tuesday, everybody. This is going to be a short 15-minute-ish video, and uh, I'm just going to kind of highlight some of my, uh, uh, the things that I scored today out shopping. Um, over the last couple weeks, I've also bought a couple of things, and uh, I got some projects that my, all my parts are starting to come in for now, so I'm going to highlight a couple of those. The only thing I've done to the layout this week is I spread some dirt on uh, tracks uh, six and seven, and that, that's really been it, and that was in my last video. I've been really busy this week working on the house and doing a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, today, I, I spent the last, uh, well, it was about 5.30 in the afternoon. I think my wife and I left the house around noon, so I spent the day with her shopping and, and everything, and uh, uh, that's what you got to do. You got you to gotta spend time with your wife because the last thing I want is for my wife to leave me because I spend too much time with the trains. So remember that. Be supportive of your wife, and your wife will be supportive of you. So uh, the two locomotives that you're looking at here are my latest projects. Uh, the one on the left is a Atlas Phase 1 uh, RS3 painted in the Midland Road uh, colors. That's the Allegheny Midland, which was uh, Tony Coaster's Fantasy Road that he ran in conjunction with the Virginian and Ohio and the Virginian Midland. Uh, I think that was the early 80s to probably into the 90s sometime. Um, if you watch some of my other videos, you know I talk to him on occasion. Uh, we swap emails and stuff. He mailed me some uh, decals uh, in lieu of me having some made. So I really feel that this uh, number 205 there is a uh, real connection to someone who has inspired myself and probably tens of thousands of others in the model railroad world and the industry. So I'm really proud of the way that's, uh, that's coming along. Um, I have a uh, just a, a couple of details left to put on there. Um, the very tiny, hardly able to see road numbers here in the number boards. Those are three separate numbers in each one. So that's three, what, three times four, it's 12 different ones all the way around for each one. So, I mean, yeah, so that's, yeah, 16 separate numbers cut out. And uh, some of them were just shredding. I went through about five or six number fives, and I, I, I still... You're looking at the good side. The other side looks kind of rough, so I'm probably going to scrape them off and redo them. But uh, it's uh, a challenge at best, especially when you're, you know, in your early 50s and you got your reading glasses on and things are still a little bit blurry and you're trying to cut. And, and man, what a pain in the ass. But I'm really happy with the uh, the way it's looking. So a couple of little things I've done is uh, I've painted the windows or the uh, uh what would you call it, like the framework or something like that that's in there. And uh, I have these sunshades I put on yesterday that I need to paint black. But the rest of it's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I posted a couple of pictures on my Instagram of uh, the 205 teamed up with the uh, 203. And I painted uh, the railings that would go on this side, uh, and, but I didn't have any railings on the other side. I was really anxious to, to get a picture of the two uh, locomotives together together. Uh, Pretty happy with that. Pretty happy with that. Also, you got the uh, the 334 there. Uh, that is a nickel plate uh, Atlas Cato RSD12, and I I use that term loosely because it's uh, not quite an RSD12, but it's about the closest thing we can get, you know, uh, other than brass. And these are old, so these are like probably the 90s, maybe the early 2000s. But I think the early 2000s uh, Atlas moved the uh, uh, away from Cato and moved to China and and all that. So if you want a Cato made in China, that's the only time you're going to get the RSD-12 because I don't think they make them anymore. But you can still make one by buying an RSD-5 and an RS-11 and then combining them together. And uh, I have a video uh, where I did that very same thing. So at the end of this video, I'll put the link up there to that. You can click and check that out. That's like a real short one, like five minutes. I hardly even rambled at all, believe it or not. But if you're a nickel plate fan and uh, you know anything about them, uh, nickel plate locomotives did not have dynamic brakes. And uh, the RSD-12 is about a foot and a half, two feet longer than an RS-11. And let me think. They had nine, nine RSD-12s. So 333 was the highest RSD-12 they had on the roster. 334 to 340, or yeah, 334 to 339 was empty space on the roster. 340 and up was where the uh, SD9s took over. So what I've done is since this has uh, dynamic brakes, it'd be too much of a, 
I'm not going to say it'd be a pain, but I'd really be afraid of destroying a decent locomotive by uh, stripping off the uh, dynamics on the top and, and removing these uh, air vents up here. So I just made them fantasy locomotives and painted them in the uh, post-1959, early 60s nickel plate black with the just the three stripes on each end. So this one here is going to get uh, finished up here uh, probably this week. The 205 will get finished up this week. I have a decoder for the 205. And 334, I'm probably just going to pull the... Uh, universal uh, uh drive shafts out and the uh, brass gears they just make it a dummy for right now until i can afford uh, another tcs wow sound and this one might not even get sound i just might put a a, a regular mobile decoder in that one because my other two rsd 12s have sound so we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes oh let's see let's pan over here talk about these locomotives so these are some athern locomotives over here um the two on the left are GP35s that I bought off of eBay. And the nickel plate had one GP35. It was a wreck replacement for uh, a GP7 or a GP9 that got destroyed in an accident. But uh, I bought those two off of eBay. Somebody had already painted them nickel plate. And they, they did a fair job, but I, I figured, you know, what the hell, I might as well go ahead and fix them up a little bit. So I've been working on that. Uh, just here and there. It's not a priority uh, like project or anything. I just kind of like working on them when I have some spare parts and, and whatnot. And I've touched up the paint here and there and some of the decals look okay, but I think I'm gonna like weather them up quite a bit. And uh, I just use them for photos. They're both dummies. And you know, they're, they're too wide. And if you look at them from the front, you can tell they're too wide. But you know, from a certain angle, like you, you can see on the screen here, it's not, not too shabby at all. Not too shabby. I think they look good together. And you know, they make a, a fine looking pair, you know, in the yard sitting there doing something or doing nothing. But either way, uh, if you're a nickel plate fan, you know, these uh, two locomotives were in, oh, the monthly nickel plate historical and technical society publication, I think in October or November of 2022. But uh, they made it in there as uh, pulling a pig train or something. But I thought they were neat. So are they famous? Nope. But I feel they are. Now you look at two Alco PAs. The one on the right is an old Athern blue box. The one on the left is a Walther's uh, Proto Proto 2000, I think it might be. I don't know that. They might have changed the names, but <clears throat> excuse me. There are minor differences in these two motors. Um, the one on the right, the 182, is a dummy. And the one on the left, of course, is powered with sound. I think it's got low sound. Uh, it's pretty cool. But you see the minor differences on the front. On the, uh, on the uh, 188, you have a white herald on the, on the nose. On the 182, you got a blue one. That is accurate, depending on what year it was. So it seems like in 58, 1958, the blue herald was prevalent on some locomotives. The white herald was still prevalent on some locomotives. So if you're one of those... Uh, got to model the prototype, you know, a hundred percent, nickel plate's going to give you fits because really it wasn't, everything wasn't uniform. But, uh, yeah, I think it's a nice little difference in detail that most people might not notice, but I actually noticed yesterday because I was going through one of my books and I, I noticed it. I'm like, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll, uh, I'll do one of these, but evidently I already did. If you notice on this PA, I filled in the coupler pocket here where it came all the way to the side because if, if you remember these they had a uh, like a, a an opening all the way over here so that the front truck and the uh, coupler could swing around on sharp curves well i've cut all that out on the inside filled this in and painted it and this is mounted this coupler and coupler box is mounted to a uh, like a like an l-shaped piece of uh plastic like styrene on the other side of this and I have very wide curves on my, my layout, so I have no problems with that. The Walther's model here has a larger opening on the front, and they used to come with a different uh, cow catcher or pilot, whatever you want to call it, with a smaller opening for the coupler. And I, I looked for that with this kit, and I didn't have it. So I'm probably going to fill that in just a little bit and make it look a, a tad bit better. Also, on this Ather model, I have a... I believe it's a, a Nathan M5 horn, and the uh, 
Walther's model just has two uh, single note horns on there. So I'm gonna take these off at some point and uh, put a brass M5 on there. And I have it, I just need to do it. And uh, I'm, I'm happy with the way they look. I mean, my Atherin engine I think looks great for an Atherin. I went through and I painted the, uh, uh, the handrails here uh, just blue on the outside. It kind of gives it a good effect. It, it looks more detailed than what it is. I'm pretty happy about that. I also went and painted the rear of the motor uh, light gray that matches because even though it looks white in on, on film or on the camera here, it's not. It's a light gray. And I, I basically just mixed up two uh, tester colors and got it close. And I, I think it looks pretty good. I added uh, uh, some diaphragm detail back there on the atherin unit. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it looks I think it looks really good for an atherin blue box that I paid 10 bucks for. It's comparable in most detail to the Walther's. And uh, they, they look excellent together pulling a train, I can tell you that. I'll even let you see it here. I do have some diaphragm to put in there uh, to fill the void between the two locomotives when they're, they're coupled up, but I haven't put that on there quite yet. Not really too concerned about it, but... Shift around here. Looks pretty good. Can't tell one from the other. I'm happy with it. All right, back to the good stuff here. Alcos are always the good stuff, but yeah, we got more to talk about. So while I was shopping with my wife, we always seem to go to Hobby Lobby or Michael's Crafts or something like that. And I have been buying these Johnny Lightning uh, military vehicles for probably a year now. I, I, I'm lucky if I find one. I don't know if they're that collectible that they're always sold out, but they're HO scale and only the trucks are HO scale. The tanks are not, the Jeeps are not, but these two and a half ton trucks are, are uh, 187. It doesn't say 187 on there. But I have, you know, other 187 military vehicles, and they're the exact same size. And if they're a little smaller or a little bit bigger, I can't tell it. But uh, they're pretty cheap. The one on the right from uh, the Korean War, uh, it, it was $8.99. The one on the left was $11.99. And I, I found these on eBay for like 20 bucks, plus tax, plus shipping and handling. So anytime I'm anywhere near a Hobby Lobby, I go in to try to find these. And I think I've got about maybe six or eight by now. And uh, they're going to look really good either in a scene or they're going to look even better, you know, on a rail car tied down. And I really got a, a good focus on the, the military stuff because I was in the Army 27 years. Uh, one of my jobs was uh, uh, transportation and logistics, and I worked with uh, you know, the railroads and the Army units to load the rail cars with uh, railroad assets, I mean, with Army assets, and ensure, you know, they were secured properly and all the documentation was right, and, you know. And so I, I got a pretty good... Uh, understanding of all that stuff plus you know i understand the <clears throat> method of loading and securing these vehicles on the flat cars back in the early 50s all the way up till the mid 70s and stuff so whenever i start doing that i think it's going to be extremely accurate i think it's look pretty pretty damn awesome oh no we're at 14 minutes okay i picked up some more uh scenic cement i only had about three quarters of a bottle left and to redo the yard with uh as much glue as i need to spray down i knew i was going to be short so I, I picked up two more bottles today and i will probably finish sifting some dirt and putting it on track six and seven tomorrow and working my way out a little bit further from the the yard um gonna put down some more ground foam and make it look like grass and uh, i will i will probably make a video of that just so uh, if someone who may be intimidated by doing some of that work, you know, you can see just how easy it is because, hell, if I can do it, anybody can do it. And I, I truly mean that. It's not difficult. It's just a little intimidating when you get into it. But uh, I think everybody can handle that. Okay, so I picked up a whole ton of parts today. Some for locomotives and some for a building. So I needed some more parts for my Alcos. So I just picked up some uh, Cal Scale uh, Diesel Sunshades. 
Uh, they're red. I would prefer them to be, uh, you know, a different color, but that'll be all right. They had a bunch of these. They're only like three bucks. Went to the little choo-choo down in uh, Spencer by the North Carolina Transportation Museum. You know, it's a, I feel like a five-year-old saying the name of the place, but but good guys in there, knowledgeable. They they can do repairs and everything, and and uh, I'm pretty happy with them dudes. So I throw them some money whenever I can. <clears throat> Picked up some firecracker antennas, uh, some brass parts here, and, you know, like $3.10. I mean, some of these parts are, I mean, if you order them online, you're going to be paying 6 bucks shipping on top of 4 or $5 for the part. So just... Yeah, I just started going back to my local hobby stores and, and making purchases because I'd rather have them have the money and keep my tax dollars local than, you know, give it to California or something like that. Got some uh, underframe bells. I'm going to put these on the RS3s. Thought that was kind of neat. That was an impulse buy. I go through these MU hoses like crazy work on the locomotive, so I picked up about four packs of those. And we'll shift over here. Now... These have been the topic of the uh, last couple of videos I made. Are these two uh, old Bachman kits on the, I guess, in the middle and on the right. So if you didn't see my last video, uh, these are both the same. Uh, I had kit bashies about 10 years ago into one building. And I did a really horrible job. So about a month ago, I decided to separate them. So that's what I did. Been following the edges, working on the edges. Now, the one on the left, I painted in a, uh, like a camouflage spring green color. And I painted the bottom uh, a color called Fossil because I think it looks like concrete. A little bit of weathering, I think it'll look great. Uh, my friend Dwight, <laughs> I love Dwight. Dwight's a retired first sergeant like me. And uh, he, he's quick to bust my chops about something. And I love it. It just, it just makes me laugh every time he gets me on something. And then I get him on something. But uh, for the most part, we have a, a lot of very good uh, discussions on, you know, operations and stuff like that. Uh, when I was a conductor for NS... Dwight was my train master. He was my boss. And uh, <laughs> I remember one time, Dwight, I said something to Dwight. And he goes, but Rob, we're friends. I said, no, Dwight, you were my boss. We were not friends, you know. But he always thought I was a friend, and I kind of felt bad for saying that. But that's the way I've always looked at anybody who is my boss because I don't want to ever take their friendship for granted if they're my boss because then, you know, I might expect them, you know, not to chew my ass when I needed it or something like that. Or then, you know, I get butt hurt because he yelled at me. But you know, Dwight's a great guy, love him to death, great family. But he suggested right here with the ladder, or not the ladder, right here where the stairs go up, that there needed to be a window. And I kind of looked at it, you know, I was like, yeah, I think he's right. So what I'm going to do with this one is, this is just going to stay this way. I'm going to redo the steps, redo the, uh, the railings to make them look better, uh, put some a little additional detail on there to kind of spice it up, uh, the Bachman doors are going to go back on. I'm going to leave the windows the same and everything. But this one here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut the windows out. I have new doors and I have two different types of windows here that I'm going to see what I can do with. I may put a window right there, but I'm definitely going to do it on, on this one on the right. And I'm going to try to really kind of I spruce it up. And if I'm, if I'm happy with these when I'm done with them, I, I won't replace them. But right now, my plan is just to kind of do enough to them to make them look decent and put them in place. And at some point in the future, uh, you know, buy a better detailed kit or, or something like that. But I got a feeling that I'm going to do a pretty good job with these and I will probably end up keeping them. But, you know, if I decide to sell them, uh, they'll be on eBay and I'll probably talk about it in a video. All right, we'll pan over here to the left a little bit. This is a... Walther's kit. I cannot remember what it was supposed to be. It's like a some sort of like office building or something like that. But I have one on the other side of the layout that I painted gray. And it is a railway express agency now. And I found this one on eBay and I decided that I would buy it because someone had already done a pretty good job putting it together. It looks lightly weathered and I like that it's not brick, but at the same well not not brick, but not red brick. It's painted brick. And it, most, most of the kits I bought that were pre-assembled or, or whatever by somebody, people use way too much glue. So I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, which there ain't no ladies watching except for maybe my wife or my sister or my, my friend Scott, his wife, and they watch them together, my videos together. So you three are the exception, but for everybody else, uh, when, you're, when you're gluing anything, less is more. 
I use super glue, Gorilla Super Glue Gel on everything. So I barely even have to put any on there. I spread it out real thin and I try to do my absolute best not to get any glue to come out here, like on the seams, because that, that's very obvious to uh, anyone looking at the model after it's completed. And it's, it's hard to you know cover up with paint because it still stays shiny and stuff like that. So less is more when it comes to glue. But I bought this uh, already assembled to do two things. One, to save a lot of time because for some reason when I work on a building, I take so much time. I don't know if why, why I take so much time on it, but it's it's like I'm OCD. I sand all the edges. I, I make sure everything fits. I pre-fit everything. I paint everything separately. And uh, usually it takes me a week, maybe two weeks to get a building finished. The roundhouse, uh, just to the right of the... Uh, uh, locomotives and, and behind the scenic cement <sighs> I worked on that six months and I, I didn't work on it every day and I, I didn't I probably worked on it two or three times a week but I would you know go above and beyond painting it I bet I spent the better part of a month just painting everything so my OCD gets me and to save time to allow me more time to work on the layout itself I bought this building and the purpose of this building is it's going to sit on the opposite side of the uh, the roundhouse. And I, I think I mentioned this in a couple of videos ago that I was going to build a parking lot back there. And this is going to be the yard office. So when the, uh, the, uh, the train crew shows up, they'll park here at this building, go inside. You know, their lockers will be inside. And then on one side will be, uh, I won't say the, the yard master, but it'll be like a clerk to give them their paperwork. And then they'll go over and talk to... Uh, the uh, uh, roundhouse foreman, and then go talk to the yard master and get their instructions. So I, I think that's gonna, that's still gonna be on the back side, and it doesn't match because I, I wanted it to look as if it was like a newer building that was just put in. You know, like most roundhouses were probably built in the 20s, something like that. So I wanted this to look a little bit more modern, a little out of place to kind of, you know, blend what you know railroads actually are. That's a conglomeration of of decades of of buildings and and uh, assets you know real assets and stuff like that okay last thing last thing and i'm way over 15 minutes because i got a big effing mouth but let's go over here so a couple of videos ago and every every now and then i've mentioned in my wife my wife always brings me something and asks me can you use it for your model trains so today it's uh, uh these uh thread spools and I think maybe these two, I can, I can rework them and make them look like steel coils. Not quite sure about these, but this one here, I think would make a good load for a flat car. I like the design here. I have no idea how to paint it or what to call it, but I think it'd be pretty cool. So once again, uh, spend some time with your wife and, you know, if you can get her trained up, no pun, if you can get her trained up to do things like this, she feels more a part of you know the model trains and then you know she can relate to it a little bit more because she's always looking for stuff like that she's always finding stuff she's always asking me if i need paint brushes what kind of glue i need and stuff like that so she's she's involved she doesn't do any of the construction but uh, a lot of my ideas i bounce off of her and she comes up with some pretty good stuff every now and then so gentlemen include your wives wives include your spouse uh and everybody can be happy and enjoy the model trains. My kids love it. Okay, I think that is it. We're at 23, almost 24 minutes. If you like this video, uh, hit like, uh, leave me a comment, uh, subscribe if you haven't done so, share this video, and come back tomorrow and see what I do next. And I thank you very much.